Sydney, I hope that you're having a great hey, time on. Uh, Garmin too. Hey, yeah, well, <laughs> Sydney is stuck in North Carolina due to snow, so that means she has an extra day of snow skiing. Uh, I know, and she's just having to be, you know, suffering on the slopes here. But we miss you, and Garmin, uh, I'm not sure where you are, but. Um, so, <laughs> <laughs> Good yeah, we love you. We miss you too. Okay. All right. So, aluminum metal can be recycled from scrap metal by melting the metal to evaporate impurities. To calculate the amount of heat needed to purify one mole, originally at 298, which is 25 degrees. So let's just say that it's here at 25 degrees. Now, this is not going to be drawn to scale. Okay. The melting point of aluminum is 933. So this is 933 Kelvin, right? So the first thing that we have to do is we have to warm up the aluminum. You gotta heat it up to get it to its melting point. But then what do we have to do? Potential energy. You gotta melt it. You gotta add the potential energy to get it to here. This is where we're trying to get to. It doesn't say it heated it up anything past the melting point. It just says it, it, it melted it. So we have two Q's that we have to calculate. The Q of heating it up and then the Q of melting. So when we look at that, Q of aluminum is going to equal, now this is the molar heat capacity. It's that many joules per mole. So what do we need to know? Do we, do we do grams? Is it MC delta T? Yeah, but it's, it's going to be moles times the molar heat capacity. Well, how many moles do we have? One. one mole. So it's just going to be one mole times the molar heat capacity of 24 joules per mole K times my delta T. Well, what's my delta T going to be if it started at 298 and went to 933? 633. Well, it's 933 minus the 298. Okay? And you, you can figure that out. But when you plug all of that in, what do you get? 15.24. Okay. Okay, but this, do it in joules first. So, but this is only two sig figs, so it comes out to 15,000 kilo, 15,000 joules, which is equal to 15 kilojoules. But that's just the energy it takes to get from here to here. Okay? Now we have to melt it. How do we do melting? So I say one mole times what? This is my heat of fusion right there. Times 10.7. Now, you know, um, that, and that's kilojoules already per mole. So obviously it's going to be 10.7 kilojoules. So now when I add those together, I'm going to end up getting? 20.7. Q total. Hey, Sydney, you have a Weldon to come to the um, well, attendance. Mia Weldon, send to the check. 26 kilojoules. That's it. It's that easy. That easy. I told you. I just didn't think But whenever you're melt. talking about a phase change, whenever it says melt or boil, you've got to think about this in order to account for the potential energy change as well, okay? So key word, melting. That's how I knew I had to have this. I knew it, I was gonna have to use my heat of, vapor, uh, heat of fusion in order to be able to calculate that, okay? Every problem has key words in it to direct you to know what to do, okay? Melting, boiling is going to be a key phrase for what we need to do there. Now, the equation for the overall process of extracting aluminum from aluminum oxide, and, and by the way, just a little tidbit of knowledge here, that is found in an ore called bauxite. 
Now, bauxite is mainly found in Russia. <laughs> when I moved to Baton Rouge back in 1982, and I was tooling around learning the city, I came across this place, which was an army ammunition depot. I said, oh, cool. And they had big mounds with grass over it. I said, man, they got guns and tanks and, you know, missiles and all kinds of stuff stored under there. No, they have bauxite stored there. And the reason why they store it is because if there's ever a war and we needed aluminum for the war machine and all the bauxite was coming from Russia and we're fighting Russia, we're not going to be able to get the bauxite. So they stockpiled it so that we could always have a stockpile uh, in case in times of war. Okay? Just a little tidbit there for you. Uh, I didn't hear a word. You Does it not like get bad, like you know, or like, like it's fire. Fire. Yeah, I get no. It's just the ore. That's the way it's found in the ground. It's already oxidized. It's aluminum oxide. Okay. Now that has absolutely nothing to do with this, but I just find it interesting. Okay. Which requires less energy: re recycling existing aluminum or extracting aluminum from Al two O three? Given that delta H is here. Okay. So. We need to extract this. So what do we do? How do we find this one? Again, it's one mole. <laughs> well, if we have this, what is that a conversion factor between? Kilojoules and moles. Kilojoules and moles. Okay, but that's kilojoules per mole reaction, which means really kilojoules per how much aluminum is being made? Two. Two. So it's just simply going to be 1675 kilojoules divided by two moles of aluminum. So that's going to equal. 837.5, so 836 kilojoules. It's that simple. It's just you have to know the mole, mole reaction, the fact that it's going to be a 2 there. So what does that mean? That means that to get one mole of aluminum from the ground takes 836 kilojoules. But to recycle <laughs> to recycle the aluminum can only takes 26 kilojoules per mole. Significantly less energy to reuse this than to get it out of the ground to start with. Which is why you should never, ever, ever throw an aluminum can away. Not only that, one of the biggest issues with it's not so much the plastics being bad and this, that, and the other. We're running out of landfill space. The more you can recycle, the less goes into a landfill. And so um, the better off we are because we don't have as much landfill. You know, we're going to eventually run out of places to put all our trash. So, yes, sir. What, what happens when that happens? Um, <laughs> they'll probably start burning it, or, you know, <laughs> piling it up. I don't know. We'd have to have incinerators. Yeah. So, it's probably going to get a lot more expensive, that's for sure. A lot more expensive. It's expensive to burn. Okay? But this is why recycling is such a good thing. Okay? It takes so much less energy. That's why I love this problem, just the, the practicality of it. All right. Um... It is, although you didn't really work that hard. I was supposed to have a break. But let's look at where's two thousand and seventeen. This is a flashback. 
Let's see if you can remember formal charges. How do we do formal charge? Non-pair on that particular atom. Okay? So it's going to be formal charge. is equal to the number of valence electrons minus one half bonding electrons minus lone pair electrons. Okay? So see which one do you think I'm gonna go and try and get the stuff together for thermite. You could have been there one day. <laughs> that is far away too. I told you it's far away. Well, it's, not, it's just 15 minutes. Why is closer? Yeah, I know. It works exactly 15 minutes. I have to go on the M6. You have to go on the Yeah, but it's like two minutes. You just got on 119. Yeah, yeah, 119. But I'm Kirkman. It's just crazy. It's in a jiffy. I get a school book, I get home. Right? <laughs> Good traffic. So you're trying to be at least seven times a week? I don't know. I don't know. Maybe five years old, I was four. Four? I'm going to get there easily. Okay, but four. I guess I can trust it. Four. Just out there. You want to go with that part of the movie? I don't know. You have to go with that part of the movie. I don't know. Yeah, I don't know. Not that far. It's about the same amount. Yeah, so if you get seven times a week. I don't know. That's because. I think a little bit, once I get on to eat, I go down that, like a metal book. It's kind of a bad idea, but it's not, it's a little bit chunker. It's close to my house. I don't know if you've been down to it, you look to your right. You see like those big business firms, like the real city mm -hmm. things around the house. Go over there. No, it's not going to be traffic. No, it's not going to be any traffic. You can literally just hug the right side. There's no traffic on the right side? No, there's zero people in traffic. Thank you. 
It's going to the Golf Galaxy. Mm -hmm. Golf Galaxy is nice. I use that for every range. Or another. Or you go to golf. Yeah, virtual reality. Are you learning? I'm not learning. I'm just enjoying. Yeah, yeah. Why do you have clothes? Oh, I thought it. It's uh. It's not a force thing. We have all. Iron, heat iron, wedge. Yeah, iron. Yep. Yeah, no. It's not even mine. It's my dad. He used a whole thing. I don't. You don't. I don't use them. I just. I do. Kitchen a sandwich. What? what? Kitchen a sandwich. Kitchen a sandwich. Wedge and a sandwich. Oh, I don't know what that sounds like. I know it's right. Wait, let me. He can do it. I have a wood. Yes. Yeah, I'm not big enough. Okay, so 15 times 7 is 105. <laughs> so 50 times 7. Carbon is the same way. Oh, nitrogen 
Look at this one. Okay, so Look at this one. Products minus reactive. No, reactive times two. Why do they have two separate words? Definitely. Looks like you pour it out with your chili powder. Yeah. Forty nine point nine is close enough. I'm sure that's what it is. I don't that anymore. Keep this running. Hobbs is teaching you how to make a grenade. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Okay, you're right, you're back. 
Yeah, she's right. Yeah. Tell her right. She's right. Say hi to the class, so Germans. Oh, yeah. That's okay. <laughs> it feels Matthew says hi. <laughs> okay. Um, let's just go over a little bit of this first. Okay? So which one did we decide was the better representation? The left, the left one. The left one. Why? Because it tells you. That is right. <laughs> 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 also, oxygen is negative. <laughs> Okay, so when you do the formal charge, they both come out to where they're going to be pretty much minimized, right? But in the left one, this has a negative one, but on the right one, this has a negative one? Yes. Is that correct? No, it's a one. Who's, who's one? They're positive ones? Carbon has a negative one. In the uh, you're right. The nitrogen has a one on the right. Carbon has a negative one, nitrogen has a one. Yeah. Okay, and on here... What, what are carbon and nitrogen? Nitrogen is positive one. Yeah, nitrogen is positive one. And carbon is? Zero. 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 Okay, so we want, we want the more negative value to be on the more electron, the negative value to be on the more electronegative element. Yes. Does everybody understand how to do formal charge? I mean, you just, this shows up once every five, six years. Okay? This is the lucky year. Yeah, this is the lucky year. All right, so you use electron dot diagrams and isocyanic boxes of bond enthalpies. Determine the value of delta H. So how do we do this? Put it over here. Products minus. Okay. Remember with bond energies, delta H of the reaction is equal to the sum of bond energies broken. Minus the sum of bond energies formed. Okay? Now, unfortunately, this is reactants and this is products. This is the one that's backwards from all the other ones. Okay? Ooh. I'm going to cut myself on. Hold on a second. Oh, no, not sure. Good morning. Oh. I think I might have oh. Well, I think I might. Somehow oh, I split my thumb on something. Just a flesh wound. Whoa. Whoa. Well, we did 
didn't have any hot water for a while, so I think there's a lot of air in the line for the hot water. Uh, before Martin, before the break. Oh. I probably do need a baby. Well, that's a long way from my heart, I'll be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to bleed out. I don't even know how I cut it. Exothermic reaction. <laughs> yeah. Maybe. Okay. So, when we go here and we look at the bond energies then, okay, where's the equation? Right there. So, we're going from the HCNO gas to HNCO. Okay, so what bonds have to be broken? Okay, we're going from this to that, so what bonds have to be broken? The H and C. We need, okay, so delta H is going to equal one times a CH single bond plus one times the carbon to nitrogen triple bond plus one times a nitrogen to oxygen bond. Right? You might, do I have them all? Minus the sum of bonds broken, one hydrogen to nitrogen bond, plus one nitrogen to carbon double bond, plus one carbon to oxygen double bond. So now you just plug in, they're all just the values. So carbon to hydrogen is equal to 413, plus carbon to nitrogen triple bond is equal to 891, plus nitrogen to oxygen single bond is 201, minus hydrogen to nitrogen, 391, plus uh, the double bond, nitrogen to carbon double bond is 615, plus uh, the last one is carbon to oxygen double bond 745. So you just add all those up together, and what's delta H of the reaction turn out to be? 1505 kilojoules. Well, I want to know what this is right here. No, I want the whole thing. Oh, negative 246. Sorry, you explained it for me. Okay. Nobody said reaction. You gave him the reactant. That's all right. Silly mistake. That's all right. Okay, okay so negative 246. So that's using the bond energy. Bonds broken minus bonds formed. That's another way to calculate delta H. So now, which species is present in higher concentrations? Okay. Just by thermodynamic favorability. Okay. So we have a negative delta H. We have a favorability in terms of delta S. Not really. They're both the same type, but the one molecule is not more complicated than the other one. Delta H is, is pretty much in, in near zero. So in terms of thermodynamic favorability, the reaction is going to want to go to the right. Okay. So as written, it's going to want to, since it's negative 246, it's going to tend to go that way. Now we don't know about how to calculate your uh, um, Now, why would delta S be close to zero? Because there wasn't a huge change in the molecular complexity. Or phase. Phase. They're bo both gases, both about the same molecular complexity. So the delta S is going to be near zero. So temperature is not going to have much of an effect. It's going to be a thermodynamically favorable reaction, just about at all temperatures. We just go from there. All right. So now we'll go outside. Go ahead. This? Remember, at moles of gases, what we look for for uh, changes in entropy. 
Uh, since there's one mole of gas to one mole of gas, there's not much, there's no change, and so the delta S is going to be near zero. All right, go ahead and stop that. Or Sydney, you're going to miss uh, thermite. Sorry. Let's go.